All right, so let's talk a little bit about trademark basics. What are the basics of trademark? This is like the basic meat and potato stuff you want to know. First off, um, when you all get back to campus and you're so interested in this shit and you're like, I got to read up on it, you go to Knight Library, Law Library actually, and you go to Title 15 of United States Code. Uh, Title 15 is where you'll find a lot of business, business laws, antitrust laws, stuff like that. And that's where trademark falls. Uh, trademark came from common law. And what that means is it wasn't written into the Constitution. It wasn't uh, introduced in a law or a bill. Uh, it means that it came from a series of court decisions um, and precedents. And basically what that means is that throughout time, uh, you know, courts established that through rulings that businesses and proprietors needed to be able to protect their brand name. So it wasn't something that um, was, uh, you know, foreseen by the framers of the Constitution or, or um, you know, Congress or the Senate. It was actually something that came from a ser you know, multiple series over decades and decades of case law. But if you go to Knight Libra Law Library and you go to Title 15 of United States Code, subsection 1127, it defines what a trademark is. Any word, name, symbol, device, or any combo thereof used by a person um, to identify and distinguish his or her goods okay, uh, from those manufactured and sold by others and to indicate the source of the goods, even if that source is unknown. So the most important thing is that, um, that the purpose of trademark is to identify the provider of goods and services, okay, and that it's it's to distinguish them from from competition and and et cetera, stuff like that. It's supposed to uh, prevent uh, consumer fraud or consumer confusion in the marketplace. Um, and so w when a consumer looks at a good, they 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 know who it's coming from and they know the reputation of that provider of the goods the goods and services. <laughs> Okay, um, this is technically codified in the Lanham Act of 1946, just so you know. Um, you know, but whatever, that's not on the test. But do know this, okay, in trademark, distinctiveness is key. You want your trademark to be as unique as possible, your brand name to be unique as possible, your catchphrase to be as unique as possible. You do not want to be like, oh, I like how flat, uh, Thrasher uses flaming font logo. I'm going to use that. That's dope. Oh, I'm going to make my shit look like the Supreme logo. Cool. Like, y'all probably have seen the Otson t-shirts that look like uh, Supreme, right? In the, in the same, which also, just so you know, I can't remember the artist's name, but Supreme ripped off uh, an artist who did, did, you know, her work was, um, looked like the Supreme logo. That was like her style. And like, they totally bit that for Supreme. Um, you know, now they're owned by like a multinational, uh, large, you know, I believe equity fund or something like that. Um, but the point, the point, the point is this, I'm just bambling. Um, you know, when, you know, when the kids did like the Autzen and the Supreme logo, number one, Autzen is a trademark of the University of Oregon. Um, and you ripped off the trademark for Supreme. Like, that's trademark infringement. I ain't telling. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can't get in trouble for wearing it, but for selling it, you could probably get in some, in some serious, uh, serious shit. Um, you know. Probably not huge, but some, some, some sh get a nasty letter, you know. Um, but yeah, distinctiveness is key. You really don't want your brand name to become a generic word. That is the worst thing in the world. Meaning like uh, you have something that you pull up and down and it connects interconnecting metal pieces and it's called a zipper. Um, you don't want that to become the generic way for describing anything that uses uh, metal clasps or whatever to you know, zip things up. That's what happened to zipper. Um, you know, you don't want um, your moving staircase called the escalator brand staircase to become a generic word for any moving staircase. You, you, you get what get what I'm saying? Um, 
You don't want your word for a croissant donut, cronuts, becoming a generic descriptor for any croissant donut out there. You want it to stay a unique descriptor for your brand of croissant donuts. Okay? Uh, but trademark applies to anything like titles, so you can't copyright book titles or movie titles, but you can trademark them, and you can trademark character names, okay? Obviously, you can trademark any name, um, slogans, all these things that you can't copyright. You can trademark a color, um, and we'll talk about examples like Tiffany Blue or Cadbury Purple or Lou Bouton Red Heeled Shoes or John, John Deere. Uh, green and yellow, um, or UPS brown, or, or whatever, and, and stuff like that. So that's just the basics of trademark, but this is pretty important stuff, just kind of be familiar with some of it. Okay, so how do you get a trademark? Well, if you want to register for a trademark with the federal government, this registration, the R circle that you, that you see, okay, this means you have a monopoly in the product market in the United States of America. And in the United States of America only, if you want to exploit that trademark in Canada, Mexico, uh, the United Kingdom, Ireland, Tibet, wherever, you have to register in all of those countries. If you don't, they can do you know, counterfeit goods that they can sell in those places. But um, to register with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, um, it's a $335 fee plus legal fees. That's probably where most of your money is going to be spent. Um, and then you have to renew during your fifth and sixth year. And then uh, every 10 years after that, you have to renew your trademark. And also, you need to be using that shit. Okay? Uh, if you don't use it for three years, uh, it will be what's called abandoned and you'll lose it. And we'll talk about that in, in a few minutes here. Okay. The other way you can get a uh, trademark is being the first to use it in commerce. Uh, literally the first to use it in a marketplace. Um, you know, you can, you can uh, have that trademark and that's actually quite powerful. Um, maybe e even more powerful than a registered trademark. If, uh, you know, if, people recognize that that trademark you'll you'll hold it and so that's very important we'll talk about some some instances of that where you know um, some brand or company didn't register for a trademark but it was famous and had been famous for decades and someone then knocked it off and tried to say well you didn't have a registration on it well it doesn't matter like you, you know you look at that logo or catchphrase and you associate it with that, that provider of the goods and services. Okay, um, so what it needs to be, it's an adjective that modifies a noun typically. So uh, you don't want it to be a verb, you don't want it to be a noun, okay, you want it to be like Miller Lite beer, uh, Newport cigarettes, Nike sneakers, right? Uh, you know, that modifies Nike is, is an adjective, it's a descriptor, right, that modifies the sneaker, right? So you don't want it to be a, a, a verb, you know, like I got Nike'd, you know, uh, or whatever, you, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't want that. Um, yeah, so like you can also like have the same brand name in different product markets as long as that brand name, brand name, eh, brand name is not famous. So like you know, um, let's say we set up, um, this is my example, Andre's Dispensaries, right? Someone could have Andre's Pizza, right? Because it's not a famous brand name yet. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I couldn't do Disney Dispensaries or Disney Pizza, right? Because Walt Disney, Disney is a famous brand name right and uh, that's something called trademark blurring where you're exploiting that brand name to sell your product or or your service in, mar in a marketplace but if you can um, use a non-famous brand name in a different product in a different product market okay um, it's also important to note that when you appropriate uh, trademarks of famous brands to make a critique of those famous brands, they can also use trademark law to censor you. And that's something that if you're reading the Bollier chapter, which you should be, um, and I'll talk about um, in more depth during our next 
meeting, um, you know, he really gets into how um, large companies have tried to use trademark to censor critics. Okay, don't worry about the Lanham Act. Um, but the one thing I just just so you know in like the world is the Lanham Act is what you would uh, is is the Lanham Act is the Trademark Act. Okay, of 1946. So it's basically it codified um, trademark law that had been established through common law into federal federal law. So whatever you know, it's title it's in Title 15. Okay. If you're excited, but it's just like, if you ever hear anybody, and I don't know why the fuck you would ever hear anybody say this, but anybody reference the Lanham Act, you know they're talking about the trademark, trademark law. 